I am currently in a long trade on Bitcoin. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you the exact reasons why I am in this long trade, the targets for this trade, and the stop loss invalidation, okay? So I'm gonna be giving you all of the information necessary to understand and follow along on this. And I will be talking about the, you know, the stop loss placement. So if this trade does get invalidated, we're ready and waiting for the next trade ahead of us straight away. So I hope that you really enjoy this video and you can see exactly how we are approaching these charts every single day. So before I get on to what is happening right now, what I'm looking at next, I would like to cover this past bit of price action, of course, for two reasons as always. So first of all, I can educate you the reasons for the drop. And second of all, so you understand the context of the drop, because it's absolutely crucial to understand how we got down here, to understand the probabilities then of what is happening next. So first of all, I'll pick up then where I left off my last public technical analysis video here on YouTube. And in that video, I was talking about why I was in a long trade. Of course, we had took a swing failure pattern of the range low, why I was in the long trade and looking for higher. Of course, at this moment in time, I had not hit a take profit one. I was looking for higher and my target, of course, was the NPOC. I mentioned in that video, if we had fell down here without hitting that target, that would have been a losing trade. But I had saw the signs the probabilities were still high to come up and hit that take profit one target on the MPOC. Of course, we can all see now together how that did happen. We did come up, we tapped the NPOC. You can actually see here on the one hour chart ending in pretty strong rejection candles. Okay, wick above, wick above. But this is what it looked like live in the time. So this is as it's happening, the analysis that I give to the champion members. Uh, I wanna talk about this because of the insights that you can gain from it very interesting trade set setup that I actually gave to everybody in the time. So uh, as we were coming up to the NPOC, we traded through it. And my first thoughts to the team that I gave them are I am not going to take a short setup here. Uh, because although we have got the first rejection from the candle, for me, there's still a high probability of continuing up to take out that high. So I approached the trade setup in two ways. So what happens then if we do not take that high? Well, in that case, I'm going to short on a sign of weakness, which is losing the range point of control. I then gave the take profit one at the daily and the take profit two second target will be the overall low, um, you know, lower on the chart. So this is what it will look like. I'm basically waiting for the entry, which would be a move down, loss of the range POC. That's our sign of weakness for the acceptable short trade entry. Uh, stop loss then will be above the high. Target one here on the daily, target two, all the way back down where, where we actually bounced in the end around the end POC, right? So that's the trade setup that I had going on. And as we all know now, that did activate on the sign of weakness. And this was our acceptable entry for the short. So you can see here, hopefully you can kind of get into my brain of how I'm approaching things. First of all, of course, in the YouTube video, I just made it clear. I'm bullish. I'm looking for higher. My next target is the NPOC. That's what I'm waiting for. Then from that YouTube video, of course, always in the group, we go into much more detail. I'm explaining to my team that first touch of it is not the short. I will short if we get the sign of weakness. Upon getting that sign of weakness, I confirm to my team, yes, that is now the short trade entry. Okay, this is given live in the time. Anyone in the group can, of course, follow along with that, take the short trade and, well, make very nice profits because what happened next, we did get a very lovely drop to the downside. And that is what we call trading the charts CC pool style. Come down to that first take profit target. And, of course, the next take profit target that we're looking for is lower down to the lows, down towards this NPOC to the range low. And well, what happened next? We continue to make our way down. And this is the next bit that I want to spend, you know, probably about five minutes talking you through this because it's a very interesting insight. And that was where we got this first bounce. So, you know, in the range that we've been trading for the past month, how this range has been going from low to high. Then we got a swing failure pattern of the low. Then we got a swing failure pattern of the high. Okay. Then we got a failed auction of the high. Okay. So SFP, SFP, failed auction, SFP of the low, back up to the NPOC rejection, right? So each high and low has been formed by swing failure pattern, swing failure pattern, failed auction, swing failure pattern, okay, of the previous highs and lows of the range. What happened next? Of course, after that rejection from the NPOC, we eventually made our way down to the low. And you can see what this looks like in the time, right? This looks like another sort of failed auction or swing failure pattern. As price comes down, takes the low, 
and then you can see comes back above and that what next one hour candle closes above the previous low. So what's your thoughts gonna be here? Your th initial thought is gonna be it's another failed auction. You could also say swing failure pattern if you're on the four hour time frame. But a lot of people are straight away thinking failed auction, long trades. Okay, I want to show the insights that I gave to my team once again live as it's happening. Okay, I actually came into the champions members and I told them this. I told them for me, we have seen too many longs opening straight away on the bounce. Based on my statistics, we have a, I've hidden this for the public because it's for members only, but we basically have a good uh, high probability chance. We make a new low when we see a bounce with instant open interest increase and positive delta. So I wait for a new low here team. Okay, so this is what it looked like. There was the wick, so you can see this is the order flow that we can get within Atus or Exo. Okay, so we're looking at the order flow here, live in the time as it's happening. We had the wick down, so this is the wick down. This is the second candle that comes up. You see this green candle here? I <laughs> hope so you can see that, I'm referring to this green candle here. That was accompanied by large open interest. As many people were thinking, like, isn't, th isn't this bullish? For me, I'm telling my team once again a few hours later, remaining short, and I'll show you where this update came in. So this is while we were then still trading here on the chart. I've told my team on the first initial bounce, again, lots of people here thinking this is strength, thinking it's another failed auction. And to be fair, that's exactly what it looks like, right? You are trading back above the low into the range. A lot of people longing here. But I'm once again telling my team, not long. I'm going to wait for that low to be taken out and, you know, sticking to the plan. I'm waiting for that low to be taken out. Okay. And, you know, moving on, I had the question. So this is the, you know, the advantage that, you know, I always give my updates in the group, in my coaches only, read only channel. And then of course, champion members can ask any question they want about my charts and setups. And this was the reply I gave live in the time before that low was taken. So once again, many people would think that that first wick was a failed auction or a swing failure pattern with good bullish open interest afterwards, right? So that's a increase in open interest, positive delta coming in on the bounce. Nice buying imbalances after selling imbalances. But as you can see, the way I interpretate the data is that we got a bounce, but that bounce has opened with a lot of early longs. I'm looking for them to be taken out and take their stops first before the bounce. It is a market maker idea. Okay, and it's like I was saying here, uh, sometimes you just really need a captain to lead you through the storms or the drops on Bitcoin. Uh, and you know, when that captain has over 10 years experience, uh, then you can really trust and feel safe in what I'm saying. So you know, you just have to think about what this is like live in the time with all the emotions flowing around, right? Everybody's thinking failed auction, swing failure pattern. But you know, I'm coming in here with a lot of experience behind my belt, you know, seeing this, running my statistics, having high probabilities, sharing that with the team. And it's like the member says here, statistics are essential and super important because that's what gave me the confidence to remain short, wait for that load to be taken and basically playing and trading like a market maker. What really is going to wreck the most amount of people? Remembering this range has been just totally all swing failure patterns and failed auctions, right? For the past five times it's swing failure pattern, failed auction. Then this time when we got another failed auction that was looking like live in the time, I come in and say, no, this time, do not trade the long after that failed first, first failed auction, right? And of course, that did go well because what happened next? We made a new low. Those early longs were taken out on this subsequent move to the downside, okay? So it's then like I tell to, and that shows you the power of statistics and sticking to the plan. New low made ending in a swing failure pattern, which now provides the long trade entry with those early longs stopped out. So, you know, I just wanted to spend a bit of time explaining that, okay, the thought process, how I was going on market maker ideas, how we had to remain patient. And yeah, it's kind of like this guy said in the group, um, you know, we, we've nailed every single swing failure pattern and fail, failed auction of this higher term time frame range. And then we knew exactly when not to trade the SFP or failed auction and predicted that a new low would be made. And this guy says, uh, blew his mind once again, and that's why you're the king. So, uh, you know, it's always nice to see the members able to take advantage of my calls, my setups, and you know, the, the insights that I give, whether it's a short trade to the downside or whether it's the long trade after an SFP of the low. You know, I'm happy to long the market. I'm happy to short the market. We are in this market to make profits. 
So of course, I actually still hold the rest of that short I've hit TAP1 and TP2 uh, from the short that we had off of the NPOC. And now I have a long from this swing failure pattern, which has actually come up and now hit take profit one. The reasons for that was really simple an acceptable take profit one after the SFP of the mini range. So of course, that was the first low to the bounce. What did we do yesterday? We just come up and took those highs. It's a, just over a 1% bounce to the upside from an acceptable long trade entry here. So we got just over a 1% bounce. Uh, you know, happy to lock in that TP1. And, uh, you know, now what I'm going to start to do is explain what I'm looking for next and how I'm going to approach these trades. So, um, yeah, I've gone through about 10 minutes there. Again, I've given you insights of why I took that short trade. Okay, and again, it was after seeing the sign of weakness and then why I took the long trade down at the low. And that was after, you know, seeing the first initial, not really sign of strength, but waiting for my plan, which was take the low, SFP the low. Okay, again, what's, you know, it's just basically what it was. So <laughs> I'm now going to explain what we're looking for next. One thing that I'd like to mention before I explain that, and that is just a reminder, of course, that we actually are in the World Series of Trading. Uh, so, of course, you can join this. This is open for everybody watching this video and anyone else that you know. More than welcome to share the link with them too. And this is for the Bybit trading competition. You can click on the link, click on join. Uh, if you don't have an account, of course, you can create an account here. And uh, once you've signed up, join the you can uh, you know join the chart champions team here. Um, so yeah, that's just I just want to remind you the World Series of Trading. This is obviously for a total of potential eight million dollar prize pool. Uh, starts in twenty two days, but if you join within the next two days, you will get a free fifty dollar bonus by uh, joining uh, the team for an early bird bonus from Bybit, free $50. Also, the other things that you can get via us are the 20% off your trading fees and the up to VIP for VIP three for free. <laughs> uh, and if you want to get advantage of that uh, VIP, that's uh, via the Google Forms. We've got that inside of the Discord. Uh, so yeah, you can get up to VIP free um, for free <laughs> via a deal. So we've got a lot of deals going on for this. And yeah, we're basically just trying to get a nice, strong team together, as big as we can make it. And uh, yeah, so if you want to join, I will leave the comments for this down in the description, down in the comments, uh, where, of course, you can join our World Series of Trading team there over on Bybit. Uh, yeah, the winning prize pool will be shared between everybody who joins the team. So, uh, yeah, it really doesn't hurt by joining. Of course, you do need $500, though, uh, of Tether inside of your account to actually, you know, join the team. That's just one thing that you have to be aware of. Uh, and then during the competition, you will have to actually trade. You can't just join the team and not trade. You will have to partake in trading to be eligible. I think the requirement there is $30,000. Uh, but building that up is not that really difficult if you just take a few trades or more than a few trades. But you know, you are essentially you are going to have to actually trade in the competition. Uh, you can't just join and not do anything. That, that's all I'll just make you aware of. If you want to join the team, more than welcome to, and I will leave these comments down below. Um, yeah, so moving on to what I'm looking at next. As mentioned, still holding that short trade from the high, have hit TP1 and TP2, but keeping the rest of that short trade open, because as it stands, we have just done a mini SFP of the high, right? So I'm in the short trade from here, and I'm also now in the long trade from the swing fire pattern, which has now also hit take profit one based off of the SFP of the mini range high. So once again, we just put ourselves in this position where we can be in such an advantageous, strong position by having confidence live in the time as the trades are coming to us, right? So as we're seeing the trade, we're taking advantage and we're taking, you know, we're, we're executing the trade. And that's how you get the best entries, right? It's by having the confidence to, boom, take the trade. Um, so from this perspective, now I'm waiting for one or two things. The first thing would be breaking above the range high, where then I will see us actually getting a nicer short squeeze towards $30,000. So this is the bullish option, okay, where we break out of this range, we hold it as support and look for a squeeze towards 30K. Alternatively, this was our SFP of the high, and I could look for a simple SFP of this range low, right? <laughs> Which would actually then give us the setup of, you know, moving down towards that NPOC, taking out the NPC, reclaiming the range, and then looking for the subsequent move to the upside, right? So that's what I'd be looking for for the bullish option, reclaim the range high, move up towards the daily, okay, around to 30K. Alternatively, SFP of the low. If we do not get a swing failure pattern of the low, okay, if we do not get that or a failed auction, 
then that's where I would activate my much more bearish scenario where I'm going to be having targets towards twenty six um, to twenty seven thousand dollars. So a very large drop to the downside. So as always, you know me by now, right? I trade the charts. I'm happy to see this rise. I'm happy to see this fall. I just want to get into high probability, good trading positions. How do I know high probabilities? I run statistics. That's what gives me the... Co if you lack confidence, if you don't know how to build statistics, well, that is what we teach you at Chart Champions. We teach you the methods. We give you the Excel sheets to build your statistics. You know, I give you trading calls in the time as it's happening. I give you thought process. We do live trading. So we've got live trading streams. We've got all of the theory required. So, of course, we are partaking in the World Series of Trading. All those strategies that we're going to be using with inside that competition, we will teach you and have already taught inside of the courses. So you can take advantage of that in the speed runs, in the whole course itself. Of course, via the journal that we've got built into the website, the vaults, which contain all of the, all of the uh, cheat, sheet, cheat sheets and templates that we have. Everything that you need is built onto our platform. So, uh, you know, we're, of course, very proud and absolutely can you know, just, just want to put this out here because it really can change the way you trade. And, you know, then has the possibility if you put in the effort to to change your life, um, you know, via trading. It's, it's a very powerful when you actually really know what you're doing here. So, uh, yeah, we do have a live stream tonight with myself and the other coaches. These are the coaches that you will be trading beside in the competition myself. We also, of course, got Igor, Rivalry and Severin. Tonight, the four of us. We'll be on live stream on the round table, uh, talking charts and talking trades. So, uh, yeah, that's the live stream of tonight. And then tomorrow, of course, we got more, um, you know, we got more live streams, altcoin updates, all that good stuff. Uh, but I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to say I, I, I honestly hope this video, is, you know, I've tried to slow it down. I've tried to make it, you know, relatively easy to understand for, for a beginner. Um, so I hope that you have understood this. And, of course, if you want videos like this, but much more in depth you know, much more <laughs> common every day. Of course, the YouTube videos are now like once a week, once every two weeks. But for the members, we got videos every single day. So if you want more videos and you want more in-depth videos and the setups and the theory, that's all available via chartchampions.com. Going to wrap it up there. I'm going to say thank you ever so much. I'll catch you in the next one. And uh, yeah, let's crush the World Series of Trading Team. Thank you ever so much. That's me signing out. Goodbye. Cheers.